Today we have a special guest on our Coffee Talk segment, and Nate continues his interview with Pastor Kenneth, who leads a ministry that connects foreign college students who come to study in Bulgaria. Welcome to a World of Good podcast. I'm Nate Tapman. And I'm Andrew Gale. And we are two friends who love Jesus, care about the church, and travel the world to share stories of people who do the same. Our conversations happen in all kinds of places. Like a coffee shop in an airport terminal. Or even the back of a crowded taxi. But no matter where we go, from Argentina to Zimbabwe, we capture stories of the good God is doing around the world. And we hope those stories will do you a world of good. Welcome to a World of Good podcast. I am Nate Tatman here with my co-host Andrew Gale. Andrew, how are you doing in beautiful Anderson, Indiana? I believe, correct? Is yeah. that where you are today? Yeah, we're doing well. We've enjoyed some good. nice weather, and yeah, a lot of prep right now for a big campaign that's happening next week with Global Strategy. So it's been a busy time, but an exciting time. I've gotten to connect with some of our uh, former missionaries and hear some great stories. Um, it's just been, yeah, it's been a good couple weeks, but but keeping my myself very busy. How about you? You are in currently in Shreveport. Yeah, I am in Shreveport, Louisiana, in the middle of a uh, another road trip. I think I'm in my uh, I've I've surpassed two thousand miles in my vehicle. Okay. Uh, over the last, uh, I don't know, 10, eight, nine, 10 days or so. So, um, got about another five days on the road before I head back home. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been interesting. (laughs) I've I've been able to travel through some different States I've never been to before. So it's including this one, Louisiana. So I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to visit with some churches here and and pastors. I was trying to think of some kind of stereotype. Like, are you going to come back with a drawl? Are you going to come back like, (laughs) you know, liking Cajun food, but I can't think of anything that, um, you know, is, is, is really good. Although hopefully you do get to eat some good food while you're there. I, I hope so too. I hope so too. I, I don't know. Again, I've never been here before, so I don't know what good Cajun food, uh, tastes like or what that, what is even considered Cajun food. I'm not, I I know. And by the time this is, by the time this is, you know, loaded and people can listen to it, you're going to be back home and you're going to have missed out on the opportunity. So for your next trip, people can, if you could, people could please let Nate know where he (laughs) should eat for his next, his next trip to Shreveport. The next time, the next time we come through here. Hey, since you said it, uh, since you mentioned it, why don't you go ahead and just give a little plug or talk about what this matching campaign is for Global Strategy? Yeah, we're having a matching campaign next week. The It's the 12th through the 18th, one week of kind of pushing our, uh, our global personnel that serve uh, around the world. Uh, helping to engage donors, new and increased giving to the ministry that they do on the ground, and so we're just being we're just the back end support to help them uh, reach out to their donors, so the missionaries can bring on new partners in order to keep the ministry going. You know, we we've, we're calling it Find Your Stride, which is the idea that you know we as an organization walk alongside the local church. And we want to help partners in the U.S. find their stride to partner with the church around the world. Awesome. Awesome. That's exciting. And if you are a supporting church or would like to support a missionary um, family, where can they go to to learn more about this? You could check out information on our website, chogglobal.org. Um, and then you can go to the global personnel page and find different missionaries and our global personnel and where they're serving. Awesome. Awesome. And as a reminder, you can also, at that same Cha Global website, find information about our podcast. Uh, we have a website, a web landing page, where you can learn information about us, the hosts. You can sign up to get episodes in your email inbox. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at A World of Good Pod, on Instagram. You can search for A World of Good Podcast. We post updates on our Facebook Global Strategy page. There's lots of ways that you can connect. But at this time, we want to hear what is in the news. Well, my article for today, it actually happened about a month ago, or it came out in the news about a month ago, and the article was dated for August 4th, 2020, and it came from the website called Ministry Watch, and the headline reads, In Uganda, U.S. missionary accused of 105 child deaths dissolves charity. And some of you may have already heard about this story in the past. Um, I believe it, it, it's kind of been in the news over the last few years or so, but uh, this organization is finally dissolved. It's finally closed. And I just want to read uh, a couple of paragraphs, just a few paragraphs, a few sentences, really, at the beginning of this article to give you some context. And it reads, a charity founded by Renee Bach 
an American missionary accused of causing the death of more than 100 children in Uganda has been dissolved after running out of operational funds and settling out of court with two Ugandan mothers. The NGO serving his children aimed to provide malnutrition care in the eastern districts of Uganda was dissolved July 18th. Bach came to Uganda to save kids from malnutrition at age 19 in, tw- in 2010 as a homeschooled missionary, initially raising funds from her evangelical church in Virginia and then attracting a following through her blog in the American evangelical community. Unfortunately, this case has been in the news for quite some time and is often referenced when talking about the white savior complex. And that's that's really why I wanted to highlight this article. Again, it's such a travesty um, that this has happened, that uh, that these kids passed away and in, 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 um, in this way. And I, I think this just brings up an important point for any of us who are from the U.S. and serving or traveling abroad. And uh, it's a reminder that we need to remember of who we are, where we're coming from, and the again, the harm that we can do when we think that we have all of the answers. There's, to a certain point, many of us, I think we resonate with Renee. We've gone on a short-term missions trip with our church. We've, we've seen needs that we are not accustomed to seeing in our communities, our cities, our hearts are broke. But there's something, again, it's, and I think part of it is ingrained in us as Americans, where we think there's something that we can and should be doing about that. But Rather than coming alongside the local church, local doctors, local medical clinics, we take it upon ourselves. And so, you know, she started out very innocently. Um, Hey, I'm going to I see this poverty. I see these kids who who need food, need attention. And that's what she that's what she focused on initially. And then she began to branch out into the other areas that she was not uh, prepared or trained to do. And I I think that's what eventually got her in trouble. And I think we do this in in little and big ways in the church. Mm-hmm. You know, this is obviously a really dramatic expression of overextending what we can actually do, but there's also little ways that we do this. You know, when we go on short-term trips and we go to build something, there is great need in a lots of places for buildings, but how many times have we taken people that have no experience building and build something? And so that's where, again, where we can often Mm -hmm. uh, believe that the little that we know about something is beneficial in another country without realizing that there, that there are rules and regulations to the things that we do and, and just common sense of what's best and not best to do in terms of that kind of global work. I think this is a bigger issue than what we can really talk about today, but I think it's an important one and probably one that we should be talking about in in the future on this podcast, but we just need to be aware of how we come across and and how we communicate and what we communicate many times in our nonverbals and and things like that. So those are even some of the small things I think that you're referring to when we go on missions trips. And so as you are working with your local church, you know, as uh, we are able to travel again, when we are able to travel again, when we are able to do short-term missions trips, and even as long-term missionaries or as a missionary family, uh, uh, who's about ready to go on to the field, we have to put everything in perspective and, and put it in its proper place. Yeah. I think this is a, a, a good point. One, how important it is to walk alongside the local church. You know, that's why that's such a big value for us as an organization is that we miss things as Americans when we come in to help without understanding what's going on on the ground. And I think that's one of the big misses here too, is recognizing that, you know, in Uganda, they have systems to help Mm -hmm. people that are malnourished. There are opportunities and, 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 and maybe in the places where she was that that wasn't available. But I, I know others that work in Uganda who, Uh, talk about that there are government opportunities and assistance and programs and things that could have been utilized that were not. I think at the end of the day, I think if we show humility um, when we are communicating, when we are traveling, when we are working with others outside of our culture, I think I think that's a great place to start. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, let's leave it at there. And Andrew, what do you have for Coffee Talk? Now for Coffee Talk. We are so excited that we have a special guest with us. So, Nate, you've been traveling. Yes. And you've been going through the Deep South, trying all of the different Cajun foods. We've talked about this already. And now you are in Mississippi, 
and you're visiting with Pastor Marcus Archer, who is the pastor at Cross Point Church in Natchez, Mississippi, who also happens to roast his own coffee, which I think is pretty incredible. So Marcus, we're so grateful that you've joined us for a little conversation about coffee. I'm just glad I could be here to be a partake of the coffee snobbery. So <laughs> Well, and it's this is as you've as you pointed out, this is one of the most spiritual moments that we have in the podcast is to talk <laughs> about coffee. I I, I think that there is it's one of the ways that we know God loves us is that God helped Kaldi, the Ethiopian goat herder, find coffee and um, <laughs> that and bacon. We've learned all of this. And bacon, yeah, that's true. Bacon is the entry drug for all vegetarians, I believe. Anyways, let's not go there, but let's talk about coffee. So you roast your own coffee, which I think is a really it's a really fun thing to do, but I think it's also a really abnormal thing to do. Like most people that drink coffee do not also roast coffee. And so what got you into coffee roasting? Actually, at a church I was attending in Missouri, uh, there was a guy there named Rick who roasted his own coffee. And if you met Rick, you you would be like, of course you roast your own coffee. He was always 900 miles an hour. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and he roasted coffee. I went to his house one, one day, one afternoon, invited me over. He showed me his roaster Tell me where he got it. It's a very kind of a, it's made to be like a home roaster. It looks like a little microwave. Yeah. I've showed it to Nate. And, That's awesome. Uh, and, and so I was like, hey, I, I think I'd like to do that. And I actually got my parents to give it to me as like a, a birthday gift or something that year. And, and I said, this is what I want. And so I, awesome. I roast coffee in it now. Very cool. So was Rick like, the name Rick doesn't make me think hipster, but coffee roasting Rick makes me think hipster. So, like, did he wear tight black jeans or? <laughs> no, it was um, the opposite of that. He, like, lived on a farm. <laughs> they had a pet pig. Like, no That's joke. Awesome. And, and so it was, like, the most un-coffee roastery person you'd ever think of. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Well, Marcus, one of the things that's cool, I think, for uh, for people to hear is that you've traveled quite a bit. You've gone to a number of different countries, right? You've gone to, you've been to India a number of times and Egypt. We got to travel together to Costa Rica, which was your best experience ever, I know. Um, so uh, you, you've traveled a number of different places. Have you had coffee in any of these different countries? And if so, what have been some of your best like coffee experiences around the world? I, I have had uh, coffee in most of those countries. Uh, in India, it's usually a bad experience because okay. it's almost all instant coffee. Uh, they love their instant coffee there. That's a big deal in India, instant coffee. I think they ship out all of It's such a cash crop. They ship it out, you know, the good stuff <laughs> um, to, to everyone else. Uh, in the Philippines, uh, coffee was sort of, they don't drink coffee or tea very much, even though they can, they can, okay. they grow, they can grow it in the area. They don't drink much coffee or tea. Uh, the best, I guess, a coffee experience, just because of the experience itself, not because of the coffee, was I went to uh, India Gospel League with Jim Lyon, and they actually, their campus is literally, like, they have a coffee plantation there. And uh, so they had coffee beans, and the guy's like, yeah, we picked these back over here, you know, and you could point to it, uh, Sam Stevens, and I was in his in his apartment deal, and, he, and in AeroPress, he made coffee for me and him. Uh, and most of what they grow is like a robusta uh, coffee bean, not just a yeah. arabica. And not the arabica. Yeah, they have that, but I think most of it was the robusta. And yes, an AeroPress. And they, I have my AeroPress here. I keep in the office. And he he made me some right there of the coffee that they grew out, you know, in his backyard. And it was That's kind awesome. of a cool thing to to be to be there to see it and and to be drinking what's you know right over just behind us Fre fresh roasted like fresh coffee it doesn't get much fresh than like picking it oh and i have and a, i saw the bag of it. it i mean they even bagged it and it's called sam's blend like <laughs> it's his own deal i have it that's i have awesome. a bag of it still at my at my office i just keep just to have <laughs> that's awesome well there has been a slight quandary that has been brought up in terms of as we were prepping for this conversation in terms of coffee tasting. So I, I have heard, this is just rumor, but I've heard that Marcus has a belief that sugar brings out a certain flavors in coffee or something about putting sugar in coffee. So Nate, please fill us in on, on what this, yeah. what this dispute is that's been going yeah. on. So, uh, you know, it's not too many people that you can sit down and have a fairly in-depth conversation centered around coffee. And so that, that can name Robusto beans and yeah, that know yeah. that there are Robusto yeah, I mean, beans, and, right? And, <laughs> exactly. And, know that, and that that's different than, than Arabica. Yeah. That's yeah, a, I, I, and so again, Marcus and I, we were, uh, we were having this very delightful conversation centered around coffee until, 
until I found out that he actually puts sugar in his coffee. Dun, dun, dun. And, uh, and I'm like, how can a coffee aficionado, uh, a coffee snob, if you will, put sugar in his coffee? <laughs> and, and you were trying to tell me what, Marcus? I, so, so I find I don't want the coffee to be sweet. So I'm not putting like that kind of sugar in it. Uh, I find wait, you're putting not sweet sugar in it. There's there's sugar that's not sweet. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Andrew, for being Andrew. That's the, that's the most Andrew <laughs> response ever. I think uh, no, uh, it. I find that it cuts the bitterness just a little bit, and and yeah. it smooths out you know some of the, some some of the the coffee, and I find that it just tastes better to me. Um, it when you have nothing in it. There are some differences in high quality coffee, but for the most part, it, it, there's a lot of times where it can kind of run together. And the sugar to me actually helps me to taste a little bit. Of, and when I say a little, I mean depending on the size of the mug, less than a teaspoon. You know, like a, like a small amount. Okay. So, so I, 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 you know, driving through the South, it's also been a cross cultural experience for me as somebody who lives in the North. <laughs> uh, as you can imagine, this is this has been a, a rather very. It's just been an interesting cross cultural trip to the south, and for those y'all come back you, now. You hear? <laughs> for those of you who live in the north and maybe have driven through the south, you know a thing called sweet tea. And yeah. uh, if you are a northerner traveling through the south and you order tea, you will get sweet tea. So you have to be very specific, and you have to order unsweet tea. Yeah. So I'm I'm saying all of this because Marcus is a sweet tea drinker, correct? I am from here, and so <laughs> you're, in, you're in. You're a cream. You're a cream of wheat eater, aren't so you? Because you're from I'm, the north. I, I'm. Thi- no, I'm not. It's disgusting. <laughs> the best kind of sweet tea is where the spoon just stands right up in the in the in the in the pitcher, and you can use the bottom. The, you can use the bottom of we it call for it syrup. syrup. Pancakes. So That's I the best feel. Kind. I feel like, and again, I'm I'm speculating. <laughs> maybe I'm making some assumptions, but I, I'm thinking there's a connection between your tea drinking and your coffee drinking because for me. I don't like sweet tea. I don't like, I don't like, you know, I just like regular plain tea, unsweetened tea, uh, again, because I'm in the South. So I, 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 I have tried, as you guys have been talking, I've tried the two different ways of, of. Yeah. So we, we, we took this to a test try. We decided that, that we, we wanted to be as um, unbiased as possible and experience Marcus's sugared tea and sugar just tea. a non-sugared tea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, the coffee, sugar coffee and non-sugar coffee. So you've been you've been yeah. tasting these, yeah. and you want to give us your expert opinion as a former coffee shop yeah. owner of your experience yeah. with Marcus's yeah. so, sweet coffee. So go again, for it. I I I usually drink my coffee black. I, I so I tried it that way, and and then I had Marcus put his little bit of of uh, sugar into my cup, which to me was a lot of sugar. <laughs> As I saw it was a little bit for the south, there. though. <laughs> for where you are, it's a little bit. Uh, uh, so so I can I so okay here. In all seriousness, I can I can understand what you are saying in terms of it does it does dull it a little bit. But from yeah. somebody that, and I don't, dr- I don't eat a lot of sweets or anything like that. So I still taste the sugar. It's a little too sweet. Yeah, it's and still a little too smaller, sweet. So I may have put a little more than so, what I need. No, but I think you're right, Marcus. I, there, there is some. I mean, there, the reason people put milk and sugar in is because it does bring out different flavors. So if you have a really acidic coffee, if you put milk in it, it cuts that acid, which is why your house blends tend to be more acidic because they know people are going to put some kind of cream in it to cut that acid. And the same is true for sugar. Putting a little bit of sugar in, well, it'll bring out some different notes and different flavors. So I. I don't disagree with that. I just I need I need less sugar in my life. There's enough caffeine in coffee that I don't need the sugar in addition. So that's for me personally. Well, generally, what I actually will do is put, like I said, a, 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 depending on the size. Your mug is smaller. I may have yeah, put a yeah. hair bit more than okay. what I should have, okay. honestly, because I mean, look, like it's, yeah, it's yeah. significantly smaller. Yep. What I will do is put, uh, like I said, less than a teaspoon of sugar in a cup of coffee, and I get to about to where I am now, where I'm, I'm about two thirds of the way down. Mm-hmm. And I'll go refill the cup, and I don't put any sugar in it. Well, Marcus, thank you so much for taking some time to chat with us. Um, thank you for the ways that you serve the church there in Natchez. Thank you for the ways that you serve the church around the world 
through the work that you do um, with the church in Natchez. I just am so grateful for pastors like you who have a heart for the globe and for what God's doing around the world and the way that you encourage and inspire others to go and seek out what God's doing around the world. So thank you so much for that. And thanks for joining us for Coffee Talk. On today's episode, we have my part two conversation with Kenneth Moraking. If you missed part one, that's okay. You don't have to go back and listen to it right away, but I do encourage you to go back to it and listen about Kenneth's story on his personal life and how he ended up in Plovdiv, Bulgaria after being born in Cameroon. And today we focus a little bit more on his ministry in Bulgaria and what he's doing there, how he's connecting with the missionary team, the Three Worlds team. I hope you're encouraged by what Kenneth is doing and how he is uh, reaching people in his community. For the last few years, you have been uh, leading a new ministry uh, known as Agape. And Agape, maybe just uh, describe a little bit about what Agape is. Uh, Agape is a ministry that uh, we started. It uh, it rose from the Bible study that we started at the Simpsons residence. So somewhere around um, 2012, 2011, 2012, we 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 started an English stu- English uh, Bible study group, and the aim for the group was to. To attract Bulgarians who understand English to come to study Bible and uh, they might end up in the church or they might learn something about Jesus Christ. So some few Bulgarians uh, were coming and some friends and so but in 2014 the medical University in Plovdiv uh, decide, uh, were had ch- they had a new program where they they started lectures in the English language and many students from the UK came to Bulgaria for for studies at the medical university and so we met with one of the students and invited her to a Bible study group. And so she came, she liked it, and the next week she brought a, a few other students. And that is how from week to week the size of the Bible study group increased. And uh, the next, by the next year, the whole group was only foreign students coming for Bible studies. And the Bulgarians that we we thought at the beginning that were, were supposed to be at the group, they already were not coming anymore. And so that next year, there were so many students at the time coming for Bible studies, at times even up to 30 or 40 students coming. I remember we going around picking them up by the by with the <laughs> with with the van and bringing them, going to pick a second trip and coming back and so on. And again, so you you were having thirty to forty students in the Simpsons apartment. Residence, yeah. For and and we're not talking a house; we're talking uh, an apartment, uh, a small apartment, a yeah. small two bedroom, uh, two bedroom apartment. So it 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 got rather full. Very yes, quickly. it was very, very full. People were sitting on the floor and so on. And so uh, the students uh, were asking that, uh, oh, well, it's good to have Bible studies, but they really need somewhere where they can go worship and sing songs and have a normal church service. So we we decided that we were going to, to start uh, a church for these students. And so... That is how the idea of uh, the Agape Faith uh, United Church started. So the name came about because uh, the students are from very, very different denominations, uh, from uh, extreme uh, conservative churches to extreme Pentecostal churches, Roman Catholics. And so we tried to, to see how we can put everyone inclusive 
not to to stick to one denomination but to try to diversify so that uh, anyone coming to the church for a month will not be annoyed that you know you are only this way or you are only mm -hmm. that way and uh, try to see how we can work together pass through those barriers and so we finally started in uh, the february of 2015. um maybe just just again just for some context here because not only is, was there diversity in theology and, and mm -hmm. practice, you know, yes. in terms of, of where these students were coming from, but there was also a lot of ethnic diversity as well. Yes, there they are were, lots of ethnic diversities. Maybe share about that as well. Uh, most of the students, of course, are, are from UK. I mean, all of them at that time, UK, I think just one from, from Germany. So, um, the diversity is uh, UK f students who are having Nigerian or African backgrounds, Caribbean background. So, and then we have uh, Indians, and then um, Japanese, Japanese, uh, British, and um, we also have included now. We have uh, more from uh, Ghanaians. I mean, I already said Africans. So we have now from Nepal, from the Philippines. And so we have a variety of, uh, of students. And Pakistani, you know, we have Pakistani. And um, Bangladesh. So most of these Asian students are, are, are also Christian families who also live in the UK. Though they, uh, no, there is one also for Sri Lanka, mm. but their family lives in New Zealand. So that is the diversity that we have in uh, Agape. Um, and, and and I think that's important to to talk about. Again, it, it's one of those things where until you're here and kind of experience it, but um, you know, for for lack of better words, uh, Bulgaria is is not or has not necessarily been open or welcoming to foreigners um yes. number one and and number two so you're talking about university students here coming from the uk with with a variety of ethnic diversity coming to a country where historically uh they have not been open um open to to immigrants. other other immigrants and, and that sort of thing so having these for these students putting yourself in the position of these students having yes. a place um one where you're studying in a foreign country foreign culture uh, m many of them already have some kind of christian background albeit yes. from a diverse uh you know very diverse theologically doctrinal backgrounds mm. uh, but also ethnic backgrounds so having a place such as agape where they can come uh come alongside others who believe the same have the same beliefs and share in um some ethnic diversity as well where they in some sense they they can feel like they're um they are able to like you said to stay united to be united around mm. around some of these things um maybe maybe just share a little bit um what does with with all of that diversity what does a sunday service look like for you guys uh, what what kinds yeah. of things do you do uh what do you uh, preach on um what how is the music the food uh yes thanks for that uh the the sunday service is usually the the focal point of the, the ministry now as i put it or our church service and so um uh this is because most of the students now come to the church service and a few of them come to the bible studies so um we uh our church service has most i mean part of it is what we call the the, the singing and worship time and we have a variety of different type of songs that we we sing we have singing and dancing something like that but not really so much of uh, jumping up and down but it's just like clapping of the hands and a loud music 
and so that is the, the the style that we we have because most most people of course they, they like singing and uh, they like those songs so uh, some something that is us and so our sermons are mostly concentrated uh, towards uh, focusing on the students and for the students and so we try to get topics that will help them live in this area in Bulgaria in a foreign place uh, and help them find themselves find the Lord and uh, not get lost in uh, this place this is a six-year program correct six-year yes. medical pro medical school program yes and so you you know one of the challenges is I mean you can say every five to six years you're going to have uh, turnover mm -hmm. in, in in with the students and so Maybe just share a little bit about that. What's the what are the challenges with that, and and what are the uh, what are the positives with that as well? We we do know that uh, every five or six years, uh, the students will be gone, and so the ministry is looking at uh, at taking that like uh, a, a normal thing how it will be, and just we'll try to look into how to raise new people how to to raise new leadership within a short time so that they can have one or two years of ministry of active service in the church and then they can hand over so that is how we we try to do now well and two i mean you guys are kind of at the mercy of the school schedule so yes. as exams come around as breaks come around um holidays that sort of thing some of the students will go back and visit their family so you're kind of at the the mercy of of all of that uh, so that, yeah, that does propose some challenges. The other thing too, um, you know, and we've, we've had these conversations before you guys have the opportunity, you know, so many of these students, um, are coming in as, as medical students, yes. um, majority of them, if not all of them are going to be leaving, uh, Plovdiv, leaving Bulgaria and, and going who knows where many of them may go back to the UK. Others may may find themselves at other places or in other places around the world. And so, you know, one of the, the things that I've always thought of is Agape's influence around the world. Um, and to think that for four, five, six years, mm -hmm. these students are here um, connected to one another, connected to you, uh, you know, at a very... Uh, very important stage and season of their life as they establish, you know, the education of, for their career path. Mm. Um, and what they're learning and doing in and through Agape is something that, you know, you, Agape has the opportunity to influence their lives yes. as they go and influence the world. And so I think that, you know, for me, in in seeing your responsibility and your role, you know what a great opportunity it is to uh, for four to six years to be able to invest in young people's lives, young adults' lives, and knowing that um, you've created a church, you've created a body um, for them to model, for them to be a part of, for yeah. them to be encouraged by, for them to be in, discipled through. And then also, as, as you said, you know, many, you know, there's a handful of students uh, as well who are in leadership positions in yes. Agape. And so they're learning how to lead um, a ministry, lead a church or be part of a team uh, that's leading worship, preaching, discipling um, and, and empowering another. So I, I think, you know, it's what a great opportunity, what a great ministry uh, opportunity that you have to invest in, in young people's lives. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So, um, so with that, um, you know, we mentioned Dave and Kathy Simpson, uh, yes. missionaries to Bulgaria. Uh, they left um, and retired in uh, 2015. Yes. Uh, so about four years ago. And with that, obviously, uh, you know, they were they were in Bulgaria for about nine or ten years, um, and with their departure. Uh, you know, it left a, a, a fairly big hole uh, in the ministry and the church of Bulgaria as a whole. Um, yes. And, 
you know, them stepping out of Bulgaria also give the opportunity for others within Bulgaria to step up um, and, and assume some leadership roles. You and Svetlana are, are a couple of those that come to mind. Uh, Gabby in Gabrovo is, is somebody else that comes to mind and um, hopefully we'll have her on uh, and talk with her in the future. Um, but with Dave and, and Kathy leaving, it also allowed for some other Three Worlds uh, team members to kind of step in and make a connection uh, with Agape, with the Bulgarian church. Maybe just share a little bit about what uh, what the Three Worlds team has meant for you, has meant for Svetlana, your family, and, and your ministry. Oh, yes. Uh, where should I start? Uh, the Three Worlds has done uh, so much, even before the system left. And so they are interested so much in a young Long, young leadership and in Agape Church in particular because of the potentials that they know that uh, is going to be of the the students passing through Agape will be a big influence to the world at large and so um, the, the three world theme the first thing they help us understand is uh, they came and the, the, uh, they help the church with a good seminar and the leadership of the church to really understand who we are and uh, what we are doing and uh, the reasons why we are doing them and so it was interesting that uh, even though we are a church or we call ourselves a church we actually found through them that we are actually a ministry it didn't change much what we do our church service, our Bible studies, or other things, but it changed the way we see things, and so changed the vision. And so um, we 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 became kind of uh, specific with what we do, and uh, knowing that our ministry is uh, going towards a particular target, and uh, this is helping uh, us better understand uh, ourselves and um, not to be too much ex expecting much from what is going on and uh, giving thanks to God for what we are able to do and so that has helped so much release some of the tension that we have um, within the leadership and within uh, uh, who is supposed to do what and what are we supposed to do and so things have been moving on well and, yeah, uh, and, and just for clarity's sake uh -huh. um, the conversations we had were uh, they moved from the expectation to be a local church yes. um, in Plovdiv, reaching their local community, being a self-sustaining church with yes. local leadership, um, and, and really just helping uh, the Agape Church, the Agape Faith United, realize mm -hmm. that um, rather than thinking of yourselves as a local church, yes. in, in reality, Agape is a ministry, a ministry to university students, and, yes. and that that was a that was a, a game changer. Kind of a just that little shift in in uh, thinking and processing has has really opened the door for what you just described. It's it's allowed you guys to think differently, think about yourselves, think about your structure, and and your ministry opportunities differently as a ministry versus a, a local church. Yes, because uh, the, the students, so us, we are not most trained. Like you know, we should be going out there and doing outreach. With, you know, going out to the Bulgarians, trying to learn the Bulgarian language so that we can contact the Bulgarians. You know, all that stress from the students that they they, they thought they if they have to do something, that means they have to go out there in the street and yeah. And do, but they had all their ministry right there in the university, yep. and they don't they don't need to learn any language to yep. to that and. The students are coming from the same British culture, and so they, they got to know each other. And so um, the three worlds has been so much uh, helping the students, the leadership, they even communicate with them privately and uh, helping them out in certain things. So, uh, and also with uh, me as uh, the, the leader, uh, listening to my own personal issues and uh, helping out uh, spiritually, financially, and also uh, after that we had the advisory board for helping uh, the leadership and me in particular and so that is how I often see uh, 
Zach, uh, Daniel and uh, Nate face to face. If not, we can talk by ch by uh, how do they call Zoom. that? Zoom, 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 Zoom uh, video yeah. chats. Yeah, and so just to, to give um, a little context to those listening, so that is actually why we are in Bulgaria right now. We are part of, uh, or we are having our fourth quarter yes. uh, meeting, um, and so we are. Actually, we are currently driving. Um, Kenneth and I are in the back seat uh, conducting this this interview, this conversation, and Zach and Dan are in the front seat listening in and getting us uh, to where we're going safely, uh, thankfully. And uh, and so yeah, it, it's been it's been great for us. Um, so Zach and Dan are uh, part of the Three Worlds team as regional consultants. Uh, and uh, they have their local um, ministry context in other countries, but will come into Bulgaria three to four times a year uh, for these advisory meetings, meeting with Kenneth and uh, the Agape um, leaders and, and other young leaders throughout uh, Bulgaria as well. And so it's so important, um, whether it's the, the Three Worlds team or missions pastors or pastors from other countries, I think, uh, whenever you get connected to a church uh, overseas, it's it's so important to visit, um, to understand the culture, the local culture, the local context, the ministry opportunities, um, and really to be uh, partners on the ground. And so, um, because uh, because of the investment that Three Worlds has uh, with the Bulgarian church and uh, specifically Agape. Um, it's very important that um, we wanted to put uh, an advisory team, as Kenneth mentioned, around Kenneth um, just to help help have some thinking partners, strategy partners to help him think, process and lead uh, as he leads Agape um, and just to, to give him some support and encouragement throughout the year. And so that has yep. been uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's been it's it's opened up our eyes again um even though i've been visiting bulgaria for the last 10 years zach and dan have been here multiple times probably even more times than i've been and so every time we we learn a little bit more about your history um history of the church history of of just bulgaria as a whole um it's such a beautiful country and and it offers so much to the world but bulgaria in many ways is kind of under the radar of a lot of a lot of people it's not a country that necessarily people will travel to um at least in the u.s mm -hmm. you don't hear about bulgaria too much i know um over here uh, a lot of europeans will will come through bulgaria or, or visit bulgaria in, in different places especially yes. over by the black sea and, and that sort of thing so all right well thank you very much kenneth uh thanks for sharing and and just uh talking a little bit about your your own personal history and background like i said every time i meet you and talk with you i, I always learn something <laughs> more about uh about your experiences and um yeah. you are you're doing a great job here in Bulgaria and Plovdiv, and um, I love the work that you're doing with the university students. It's obvious that you have a, a heart and a passion um, to work with with people, to connect people to the gospel message of Jesus Christ, and um, to support and encourage. And so, um, you are you definitely have a pastor's heart, uh, a shepherding heart, and. Uh, I can speak for Dan and Zach and the rest of the Three Worlds team that we all see that in you and uh, want to continue to help you and walk alongside of you yeah. in, in helping you to fulfill the mission vision that God has for, for your ministry. So thank yeah. you. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks for listening to A World of Good. A World of Good is a podcast production of Global Strategy and Church of God Ministries. Our theme song is Colorado by Leo Flores. If you want to join the conversation, visit us at Twitter at A World of Good Pod, on Instagram, A World of Good Podcast, or visit our website, chaglobal.org slash A World of Good. And join us next time as we share more stories of good from around the world.